What's good, America? It's your man, Reggie Florima, a.k.a. Big Flow, with my co-host, Oliver Gibson, a.k.a. OG. Today, we got a special guest. Uh, today's the uh, 10th pick of the 1996 draft out of Auburn to the Bengals, 13-year NFL veteran, Willie Anderson. What's up, Willie? Fellas, 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 what's good? Big Will, as we call it. We got to do the manual applause. Our applause button yeah, is yeah, on. Yeah, we got to give the manual yeah, applause because we got technical difficulties. And here's the funny thing. So... I was uh, supposed to be here half an hour earlier, and I got stuck in traffic. But so me and Will get in a conversation. And the funniest thing about William, and we will get into all of it, is in my 10 years of pro football, I've met a lot of people. But the one thing about Willie that's unique is he's more than just a football player. Like, football was almost like just a hustle for him. And so every time we have a conversation, I'm telling you, it's going to happen in this. I know it's going to happen. Willie will start out a story with, like, it was me, President Clinton, <laughs> And the dude that invented the color blue. Every conversation, he just hit me with that when I was on the way back. He was like, yo, I was talking to Pharrell and da 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 I'm like, dude, come on, man, Pharrell. Go ahead, finish that story, man. I want to know about the guy who invented the color blue, man. That sounds like a story. I'm just saying, every story was quite like that. So, Will, man, how you doing, man? How's it going? I'm good, I'm good, man. Okay, so after we met originally uh, when I came to Cincinnati, and um, you're one of the, the more articulate people in the locker room. First of all, talk about or tell us how you got your start in football. First of all, you are what six foot six, six six, six six. Okay, six, tell six, us how you got your start. I'm sorry, go ahead and tell and tell us how what at what point you realized that you wanted to play major college football. And we'll get back to where you played and just take us through the story how you got started. Um, you know, I started playing ball at 11 years old. I mean, so I was shit. I was six one, one sixty. I remember that because. I was 11, I had to play for my park team, but I, I was overweight to play for my age group. Right. <laughs> so I had to play for uh, you had to the, play junior, up. the junior team, which was like 13, 14. So I'm 6'1", 165. You know, every freaking Saturday morning for game day, I had to go weigh in, but I had to show my birth certificate. So because I was so young, I never had to weigh in. Mm -hmm. And coaches right. be mad and shit like, yo, this big ass dude, I know you're older than me, this kid's a baby. So... I played my first my first year at Park Ball, man. That was it was terrible. Um, what was I, it? I was terrible. I played like center, defense in. I was a big kid, could run, but I was never that. I was never. I was. I wasn't a physical guy. My first year playing football, I was awful. Um, Eighty seven. My my seventh grade year, played for my middle school team was awful. I was even worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, when I turned thirteen, I grew to like six four two sixty. When I was eighteen, shoe. My team is pretty good. And my third year always be the year in football. It's crazy. My third year, for some reason, high school, well, junior ball, high school, college, and pro, my third year is the year the light click on for me every year. So I always say, damn, if, if I can get to year three on every level, I'm, I'm going to be good. So you just need a couple my third more, year right? in, in junior ball, middle school, eighth grade year, was dominant. Football team was dominant. I was a dominant basketball player, dominant football player. Um... I was, telling, I was telling Flo, in 88, my eighth grade year, my high school team won the state of Alabama and ESPN's first national championship, high school championship. Okay. So me going to high school, my mom remarried. I was standing I was standing my mom and my stepdad, but I grew up in a neighborhood um, where my rival school was, Blunt High School. I played a school called Viagra High School, okay. right outside of Mobile, Alabama. It's, it's in Pritchett, Alabama, actually. And it was my, if it was in today's time, my recruiting from eighth grade to ninth grade would have been like front page news. It was crazy. It was, mm -hmm. you know, cast was recruiting me, you know, saying I was living in the wrong district. You know what I mean? And Were you? ironically, um, a guy by the name of Robert Dr. Doom Brazil. You guys know who it is? Sounds familiar. He was a Hall of Famer in 2017 with Ray Lewis. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Brazil was one of my high school coaches, man. He was just retired in 85. just like 89. He calls me the night before my high school practice. Hey, Cup Coach Brazil, I be at your house tomorrow morning. Come pick you up. I'm like, who the hell is this? Real deep voice, but he was an assistant coach at Viger, my high school, and he had played there back in the '60s. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Brazil was um, he was Walter Payton. Him and Walter Payton were um, college roommates at Jackson State. Okay. Oh. Wow. And Walter was the offensive rookie of the year. Coach Brazil was the defensive rookie of the year. Played for the Houston Oilers. I heard of him. Now you said Pro Bowl. Yeah. Um, you know, made the '70s, '80s All Decade mm -hmm. team. Yeah, first time you know they finally got coach in 2017 Hall of Fame. So, coach picked me up, man. My dream was to be 
Reggie White or Bruce Smith. As every lineman was back in the back. Oh, you were a D line guy? What man? O lineman girls were not checking out O lineman back in the day. Bro. Like if your if your freaking name wasn't getting called out. Hey, bro, listen, they never called an O lineman's name, man. That oh was, man, that was a lot of our demand. We, we popular now, but back in shit eighty nine. Come on, man. Like before a big dude. Hey, you we were like dark skin brothers in eighty nine. I was just okay. thinking that too. Pat. Back there, I'll be sure yes. of them. You went pre, yeah, pre Shaq, pre Biggie, <laughs> right, yeah. right, 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 pre Biggie. You know I mean? They 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 hadn't made us cool yet. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I'm playing football and basketball just to get noticed by girls. So mm -hmm. I'm coming to this high school team, national rank team, you know, um, two times defending, um, state champions, national champions, and um. I, my first day of workouts, I jumped in the D line line. Now my school is in the middle of the, middle of the hood down in Pritchard, Alabama, but we had a white staff. My, my head coach is legendary old white guy, legendary mm -hmm. coach, coach Harold Clark. Defense staff was black mixed with white. O line coach is white. So my whole thing was I jumped in the line in the D line line. Now we, now we had a guy by the name of Mitch Davis. My freshman year, Mitch Davis played went, went to play on the play at Georgia. Was All American in high school. All SEC player Georgia, so I want to be a D lineman. I got a D lineman line. Coach Clark came by and um, he never smoked cigars. He chewed them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he chewed them and spit them. No, ironically, he died of cancer years later. But he came in line and said, "Hey, boy, I say, um, I see your big ass jumped in the D line line." I said, "Coach, I'm standing in line looking straight like a soldier." I said, "Coach, I didn't come over here to play offensive of line. If y'all doing that, I'm leaving. I'm gonna be a D lineman." He smirked at me and laughed and said, all right, whatever. So first two or three games, man, my high school career, played D-line. My first game, national rank team, I thought I had like six sacks. But we was playing a wing T team. I had like six tackles, though. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought I hit the quarterback six times. Right, and right. I'm right like, your honor. Yo, this shit's easy as hell. It seems like, man, you dumbass. We're playing a wing team. He's running the ball. Those tackles. <laughs> Six tackles not bad though for a freshman. They were, they were, but I'll give you that. Was a bunch of killers and all Americans that, 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 that was I was getting laughed at because it was a second team, third team guy. So right. our offense goes, man, and play horribly against I think Carver Montgomery on the road. We come back, Chris Clark called me in the office and said, uh, my nickname was Stew Me from sixth grade, Stew Me. He right. said, Big Stew, come to my office. I said, For what? What's going on? He said, How would this Friday night? You would love for your name to get called out starting left tackle. I said, hell, I'm going to start crying. I'm 14. I'm going to start crying, bro. I said, no, coach. I want my name to get called out to start and D-tackle. Like, why I can't do that? He said, see, that's your fucking problems. Y'all want to play damn D-line? He said, by the time you play football, line will be getting paid a million dollars a year. I said, yeah, fucking right to myself. Coach, like, coach Nostradamus, huh? <laughs> I said, line will never get paid a million dollars a year ever. Are you crazy? I'm not playing O line. Right. Well, played O line <laughs> next week. <laughs> you know, I started playing O line. My high school was a real good team, so I didn't play both ways because we didn't need to. We had 120 some guys. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So play O line, man. Uh, my third game playing, bro. I played on ESPN. So Robert Brazil, he hypes me up to the ESPN staff because you know he he knows the staff from playing. He right. knew all the guys. He hypes me up. Yeah, we got a freshman here. It's gonna be the real deal. Bro, a dude by the name of Carl Montgomery. I told this story a couple of times. Carl Montgomery, five foot ten, two hundred twenty-five pounds senior, beats me for four sacks on ESPN. Mm. <laughs> now, after being the spotlight up and coming freshman, right? Like, he just shot at me, dog. Like he beats me so bad, I wake up in the middle of the night in the middle of my bedroom, and my pad stands trying to block him. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I, I was sleepwalking. I was ter I was I told my mom, I said, yo, y'all realize I could have been traumatized from that and never could have been <laughs> PTSD from No, I, no you're you, right though. You, you seen this, we seen guys in pros, linemen, you get beast men down times, you become traumatized. Mm -hmm. And you can't play. So imagine a 14-year-old freshman for a national ranked team right. around a bunch of damn gangsters. Did you guys win or lose? Oh, we lost on ESPN too. So that's the wow. first time we lost in like two, three years. And you I'm thinking the whole game my fault. I could have been suicidal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So finish that year out, man. And um uh, my 10th grade year, I come back. This is a funny story. I come back at 66305, now 15 years old. I gained that's it back in. before 305 was a thing in high school. Yeah, you know, 
You know, they weren't winning three hundred back then. Now. So now I'm the worst dude on our fucking team, though. I say that I probably won, but I was at least the worst lineman. There's no lie. I was just a big dude. I stayed on the ground all the damn time. And my coach, by the fourth game of the season, my coach stopped practicing. God damn, I can't take it no more. He stopped practicing. He said, I'm tired of your big ass being on the ground. Every damn play was doing 907 drill. And I had a dude by the name of Chris. Chris, short dude, about 5'11, 240, was a mm-hmm. backup D lineman. He was upperclassman, so he was mad that he wasn't starting. Right. And so his whole claim of fame was, I'm going to beat the biggest dude ass on the team every damn day and show him I should be playing. And Chris was just fat. I couldn't block him. I was taking one big long step, fall on the ground. I coach stopped practice day. He said, Look, I'm tired of you on your, on your big ass on the ground every damn play. So he says, I'm gonna teach you how to block. He said, he stood beside me. He said, take one fast, quick step, like boom, to the right. I took one big long, slow ass step, takes his whistle off, hit me on my ass with the whistle. Bah! That's too damn slow. Do it again. Took about 10 minutes for me to get one fast jab step in. Now he says, bring your second step just as fast or faster than your first mm-hmm. step. Like right. one, two. I took a long ass second step, hit me in my ass with the whistle. Bah! Now, now Castle, y'all know that y'all D lineman, y'all laughing. Castle mm-hmm. laughing. I mean, we holding up practice to coach one dude, laughing by laughing. So about 20, 30 minutes, I got the one, two down, left and right. My old line coach pissed off because he's not coaching me. The head coach, mm-hmm. the head coach coaching me. We just stopped practice for 30 minutes. He said, Now, when you bring your second step, bring your hands with you. I said, Oh, never told me that before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to block house on one big long step. I'm following my ass every time if you're a quick guy. So at 30 minutes, he line it up. First play, I, I got two fast steps in the ground. I took Chris ass and ran with my 20 yards and dumped him. Boom. Right. Now everybody going crazy. Do it again. Second play, he beats me again. Third play, two steps again. I grab his ass and run with him, dumping 20 yards again. Coach Carl practice off. The next week, I made Mobile County lineman of the week. You know, back then, Mobile, you, like you get a big buffet dinner. You, you, you go speak at the Crichton Optimus Club. You pitch in a picture right. paper. A suit. Well, the first week, I didn't have a suit. I, 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 I was the only black guy with no suit. I had a tie, button up tie. I won it again the second week, and I told my dad, I, said, I, need, I need a freaking suit, man. I need me a suit coat because these white boys wearing suits in the picture, picture in the paper. So, man, I went from being terrible to my sophomore year, I was first team all state. Um, my junior year, I was big time. My senior year, I was number one player, in the, number one player, number one lineman in the country. Okay. I won 6 8 player of the year. Um, the first time a lineman ever won that, that high of a classification until. Andre Smith came years later and won Mr. Football. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But um, so I started off like that, man. And that's why I'm big on teaching kids. That's what I was like. I taught early on how to play. Right. And I teach that same technique right now. Okay, but, this is a question I got to ask you just to pause you. You didn't have a suit. Where did you find a size 18 shoe? Did you hit up Freedman's in Atlanta? No, like, where did you find a size 18, dog? That we, we was broke, dog. Like, Melvin my, my, my shoes every year. It's another funny story. So, Every year before I went to high school, I would go to Hibbit Sporting Goods. Y'all heard of that? Hibbits, yeah. Why have I heard of that? It's like a sporting goods place like Dick, like um, Dick's, but they'd they be in malls though. Okay. Um, gotcha. So Hibbits was the only place in Mobile, Alabama, I can go to and, and order my shoes out of a Nike catalog. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's how I found out Nike had a store in Memphis because my shoes always came from fucking Memphis every year. So well, that's too nice, mom. Pre ninth grade year, eight, junior high. I go myself. Well, now in high school, I can't go because we got two of day practices. My mom goes shopping for me. I said, Mom, whatever you do, don't buy me an all white shoe. I was size 18. What, what, what my mom do at 14, she said, Oh, his feet gonna grow. Goes and buy a fucking size 20, all white Nikes this big. Hot top Nikes. Clown shoes. <laughs> hey, when shoes came in the mail, boy, I just started crying, dog. <laughs> <laughs> first, day of, first day of school, I got, I got called in the lunch wave with like all the gangster dudes, like all the dudes that if they drone on you, you can't say shit back to. Right, right. <laughs> just got to take the L right there. On the the L. I'm about, <laughs> At 6'6". Six, six. Listen, my, my pride and all that took, took a... I, I, learned how to, I learned how to deal with shit that day right there. Cause I was like, right. yeah, I'm back. 
This right. is a wrap. Okay, so taking it back, so now you're the number one lineman in the state of Alabama, probably in the top 15 in the country. In the country. Number one lineman in the country. Number, number one lineman in the country. Okay, so where were your five visits to? It's crazy. So I was telling, I was telling Flo that Notre Dame quit. Notre Dame quit recruiting me. I took the ACT my junior year, I think. This bullshit made a real low score. Made a low score. They cut me off. They quit recruiting. Mm-hmm. They, well, I took it again my senior year. I got the 23 on it. 22. They called me back. I was like, oh, man, the hell with y'all, man. Like, y'all, like, I, I was a Notre Dame fan because, you know, 88, watching yep. Stonebreaker, watching Tony Rice. Right. Mm-hmm. All of them, I, I, I was a you know, Rocket fan. I was a big Notre Dame fan. So when they, when, they, when, they, when they quit recruit me, I was pissed off. I said, man, that's bullshit. So my visits were, my senior year, Bama, Bama won a national championship against uh, Miami. Cope, with, with, with John Cope. Yep. And John here. Cope, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they wanted okay. they wanted to hear so Bama. They had Teague and all them dudes, DBs. Yeah, it was Teague with the interception. When, yeah, yeah, when yeah. Stripped the guy, or he stripped yeah, the guy, yeah. turn around. That yeah. was that was a hell of a yeah. thing. They, they, they were legends in Alabama. Man. I grew up hating. I'm from Mobile, so in Mobile, Alabama, Alabama, University of Alabama rules supreme. Mm-hmm. Right. I grew up hating Auburn. Auburn just had like a five and six season. So, uh, but Terry Bowden, they fired Pat Dye, who you know, rest in peace, Pat Coach Pat Dye, legendary. Coach. Pat Dye mm-hmm. style of coaching. I went to a camp up there as a, as a senior. I thought, hell no, nah, this this camp. This is he reminds me of my high school coach. Right, hard nose, just run the ball. And back then, that was a that was word and talk about this new offense called the spread offense, the shotgun offense. Mm-hmm. And we knew in '92 to say, man, hey, this thing going to the league. And y'all all know we all in our 40s. We grew up in a time where y'all played D line. Y'all had to stop the run. Yeah, it was line power line lead. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what sense. I mean? So, but I, I was hearing that, hey, man, in the NFL, we're going to be in two-point stances. You're going to be a pass blocker. So, I picked Auburn. I, I visited Alabama, Tennessee, Auburn. It's crazy, man. I shut down Florida State. You know, everybody, everybody thought I got paid crazy money because Auburn's going on probation, but we had no idea they were going on probation. Right. But you need to choose Auburn out of Alabama. Florida State, Tennessee. Um, I always wished I would have visited USC because they, they were the first school after that um, offered me after, ironically, I got my ass kicked, kicked as a freshman. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were the first team sent me the, the old media guy books with Junior Say on, on the front cover of it. Right. You know what I mean? so, um, but I only visit three schools, man. I mean, I, I fell in love with Auburn and I fell in love with uh, what Terry Bowen was promoting, that, that kind of style of offense that his dad ran. At Florida State, I said, "Well, we run in the SEC. It's gonna be, it's gonna be different." You know, I see my, my boys with Alabama; they have a hard time struggling, pass blocking, and one made it to the league. Um, it's crazy. Off that, off that national championship team, only I think only four guys made it to the league. Wow, so that's still I, a lot. Though. Four guys is still a lot. It's crazy. Um, so, so, how were you I, guys when you were at Auburn? How was your uh, your career there? Were you guys good? First year, we go eleven and zero. We on probation though. Mm. Oh. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, we went probation for something that happened in '91. So '93, my freshman year, we go 11 and 0. Um, my mm-hmm. sophomore year, we we went our first nine games. So I'm like, what? 22 and 0. My first shit years in college. You no, know, we we beat we, we beat Florida at Florida. We against Kevin Carter for the first time my sophomore year. Shut Kevin down. I actually got drafted. The Bengals actually the Bengals actually drafted me off what I did my sophomore year. My junior year I had a knee injury. Played with a big ass brace on my knee. <laughs> you know, I was playing. I played okay, but my sophomore year, I played really dominant, man. So we we beat Florida at Florida for the first time. Um, what point did you start starting? Freshman year or sophomore year? I started my freshman year. I played. I, I played guard my freshman year. Okay. Yeah, started. I, I came in week three, I think, and started. Oh, start, start right. going out. Okay. But so no TV, you, no TV game, no TV, no bowl game for two years. Right. Right. So your junior year, you were had you nursed knee injuries. You didn't stay for your senior. Year. You left. You left early, right? Left my junior year. Yep. You, know. you left after your just. Okay. What was your feeling? Um. First of all, explain draft day to me to you. Your experience, like when you heard that the Bengals were taking you. What was your initial reaction? So for some reason, man, that year, the all the top ten picks was no the top pick in the draft that year was K Hardy. It was yeah K Hardy. No Kevin Keisha. Hardy. Keisha. 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 K Hart is number two. Yeah. Simeon, you know, y'all boy from Chicago was, was number three. Right. Um, J O, 
John DeAndre was number four. Um, guy by the name of Cedric Jones, Oklahoma, was number five. Cedric Jones, Jones, the Bears? Six, no, that's Cedric Benson. Who? I was thinking Cedric Benson when you said Cedric Jones. I'm sorry. Oh, Cedric Jones. D Lyman played at Oklahoma. Um, mm-hmm. Seven was like Terry Glenn. I forget who eight was. Nine. I thought I was going to Tampa Bay. So my my junior year, we played Penn State in the in in, in, in the Outback Bowl. So I fall in love with the city of Tampa. You know, strip club galore down there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I'm, I'm in Florida, loving Florida. I'm thinking Tony Coach Dungey calls me on draft day. I'm cutting my mom's yard. I, I didn't go to the draft. Now the whole time the Bengals were the only team in the draft. Saying, Wait, did you say you were you were cutting the grass? Draft day, cutting the yard. I had a big ass party at the crib. Oh, okay. <laughs> not not. Nothing flossy, no, no flossy, big willing, no, just I mean, right. country boy cutting the yard, right? You know, what I mean, um, Tony Dungeon calls me on draft day, asked me, I'm gonna be a Buccaneers, hell yes, like what? Because mm-hmm. I said, the Bengals been saying the whole time they're gonna draft me, and <clears throat> you know, OG, we, we, we all laughed this at the Bengals. Remember the song that Scarface had back in the 90s? I'd have been the most funeral in the last year than the motherfucking the Bengals, Bengals won, get losses in the last past year, yeah. 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 That was the only thing I didn't want to do. I was like, I do not want to go to the Bengals. So when Tony Dungeon called me. I'm like, Coach, yes, sir. I, I want to come. Man, that pick came. The Raiders came and moved up and took Ricky Dudley, tight end out of Ohio State. Right. And the next pick, Bengals got to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And actually, that, that, them, them first two years, they weren't bad, man. Like, right. shit got bad from, 90, from my, my third year <laughs> to – Shit, my seven year shit. You, you know that, that shit went down here. Could you come out with Car- Carson <laughs> Palmer was there? Was like Keeley Smith there? Who, who was the quarterback? Keeley was there in 99, my fourth year. We got to Keeley. Okay. So how many quarterbacks did you saw? You saw uh you saw Four, Carson, you 50, saw Keeley, you saw Blake. I think I counted I counted 15 one time. <laughs> Crazy. Until I got to Carson. And it kind of calmed down. 15 quarterbacks in one squad. Jeff Blake. Um who was the coach there? Austin. We, we like three guys in '98. We had we, Bruce Cosley. <laughs> hey, in '98, in '98, dog, Willie Jackson, a receiver, lined up at quarterback. We, we, we went through all the quarterbacks. <laughs> what string quarterback were you? Were you uh, were you somewhere on there? <laughs> they say you used to play basketball. You could just throw the ball up. Hey, this was crazy. Like, we were playing Tampa too, and zapping them. They hurt. They hurt. Eric, the, the third string quarterback, they hurt him. Mm-hmm. When Jack came in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you hey do you remember Coach Kosler's legendary legendary pregame speech where he would smoke cigarettes? He walked in the locker room and said, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. All right, guys. Go out there trying to win one. I'm like, what? <laughs> he walked out the room. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on the, on the, in the other locker room, we playing Pittsburgh. Motherfucker right. breathing fire they noses. Right. <laughs> they they coach. I always said that. I said, man, I said, to the Bengals get a staff that look like they can beat the other staff ass, we gonna never win. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I look at you. you had four uh four Pro Bowls, three times first team all pro, uh one, one team one time second team all pro. <laughs> Is it hard to keep getting up for that though? I mean, you're out here blocking and they st- you're still giving up. Somebody gave up a sack, somebody gave up another sack, but you got your guy. At some point, you just want to just just join in. So I'm, I'm stressed out for nothing. Man, that's a great question, man. So from um, '99, my fourth year, to 2001, my sixth year, I gave up no sacks and gave up one pressure. Um, no Pro Bowl mentions. Our records were like four and twelve, five eleven, six that. and ten. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I mean one day, <laughs> y'all had the key on here. One day, I think in with the year 2000, maybe 2000, one of those years, Tequila had a career year. He had like mm-hmm. seven, yeah. six, seven sacks, mm-hmm. picks, one, 170 in tackles. All his stats be all Ray Lewis stats. Yep. I, get, I gave up no sacks, had a, had a 13, 14 yard running back, and but oh, I was right. terrible. And right. we thought for sure, boy, we would make the Pro Bowl. You know, Dekio and I played together at Auburn for a year. Right. And um, I'm, I'm old Dekio. And I looked down the locker room. He was damn near in tears. I was damn near in tears. That's when I knew he was going to leave. Right. I knew he was going to leave. I knew he was getting tired of doing that. And we couldn't get any 
Like we had players, man. Like we we didn't have the right group of players together. You know what right. I mean? And we didn't well, have the right about it, and, and just to add what to what you're saying. I asked the this question. I'm gonna ask you the same question. Do you think you would have gotten more notoriety, more Pro Bowls, had you been on another team? Definitely. Like people hate the Bengals. Like like they, at the Pro Bowl. So the kid with the Pro Bowl 03, I'm making 03. He's playing for Buffalo at the time. We were both stretching at, at practice one day. Practice on a game. Sean Salisbury and uh, Stink, uh, the, the old lineman for Denver that do the games. Oh, Stink, yeah. Flair, yeah Mark Flair. Yep. Remember one time they were a big ESPN crew. Uh, they actually came up with that word bungles. They meant Chris Berman. Mm. And Shaquille and I were stretching at practice. We were stretching. And they came up. They said, man, um, Willie, I, I want to apologize to y'all, man. I said, what you talking about? He said, man, you, Shaquille, Corey, y'all guys should have been over here, man. He said, but he said, ESPN actually tells us when the Bengals highlights come on, make fun of these guys. Like, wow. come up with words. So they came, up, they came up with the word bungles. You know what I mean? Right, and right. OG, OG can go have a two-sack game. Fumble recovery, they said make fun of the Bengals. So wow. the national narrative was we had no players and that we were sorry. You know, right. Martin, oh, you know, was Marvin got there on that same shit. Marvin got there thinking we had no players. Everybody right. sorry. Right. I'm like, I told him, I said, Marvin, look, we got some fucking players over here. We just need. I mean, y'all are professional football players. People try to get, they get a little carried away when they start selling. And a lot of. Players. And a lot of number one draft picks. I mean, yeah, right? To win about that. Something. Obviously, looking at TJ, Willie, uh, Takeo, Corey. I mean, so at that point, you got to kind of look they, at that. They, they, they kept missing on, they, you know, this out. I mean, these are boys, but I mean, it is. I mean, they kept missing on the key position. Right. Right. And when you get a quarterback, you got to have key people to work with that guy. Right, you know, Achille, Achille will tell you he messed up some, but they didn't. I I played that because I played for fifteen Bengal quarterbacks. I seen the level of uh, training, development Carson Palmer got compared to Achille. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Totally different shit. Carson right. came into a totally different Bengals environment than Achille came into. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, me for one, I was older when Carson got there. I was older. Yeah, Richie Brand was still at center. Hell, the first year Richie called out all Carson's uh, quarterback calls. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you that to have a veteran center like Richie Brand, myself at tackle. You got Levi Jones. You got two first round tackles. Carson did. Right. Eric Steinbach was a second round guard. You know what I mean? Richie Brand was center. My, my, my boy Bobby Williams. But Mike Golf for a year, then yeah. Bobby Williams came on, and we dominated that, that O line. Achilles, he had none of that, you know what I mean? And yeah. he, he didn't have the coaches, he didn't have none of that stuff. So the Bengals kept missing critical spots at quarterback, and it set you back for six, seven, eight years. You know I, mean? I think you know, I, I have an opinion about that when it comes to quarterbacks, and a lot of times you see all oh, these guys are bust their bust. The guys, they played in college, right? And things went well for them. They have go, going against great defenses and do whatever. Obviously, it's a big jump to the NFL. But, I mean, most teams that pick early, they're not a quarterback away. But then they throw this quarterback in there. You start seeing some of these other guys that do well, like a, like a Aaron Rodgers or, or, or Brady, who got to go to a team that was good, and then they got to come on later. And then, okay, now that, you know, they were just – they had to catch up. They had to get their speed up, where it's everybody else – you're a, a rookie quarterback. You got fire breathing dragons out there trying to get a contract year coming off the edge, and you're blocking your guy. The other guy here isn't blocking. He can't look. You know, I don't know. I think there's a lot of quarterbacks. As you mentioned when you were a freshman, you said you could have you could have went in the tank after those four sacks you gave up. I think there's a lot of guys that you know they've been on top of the world their whole life, and I'll get up here and it's all this stuff in their face, and they just can't take it. But if they would have went to if they went later in the in the draft, I think they probably wouldn't have been bust. That's my. So point. my last year, I go to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have Troy Benson be the starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. And Troy put some kind of sickness where he lose like shit, 30 some pounds. For this is crazy. He got sick. Wow. And they drafted Joe Flacco at the 12th pick. But Joe hadn't done anything before I got there. So the Bengals cut me in training camp. They say Joe hadn't done anything in training camp to make them think 
he's gonna be the starting quarterback. So Troy Vincent, not Troy Vincent, um, um, Ohio State. Troy Smith. Troy Smith. Troy Smith. Troy took over the job. Troy gets sick. Joe now has to be the starting quarterback, and Joe wasn't a skilled passer, but we we, we had a dominant fucking running game and a dominant defense. And if he can throw for 18 touchdowns, we're in a fucking we, we in a championship game. You know what I mean? We're going for 18 touchdowns, but we, we, we had a three-headed monster at running back, great defense, and it took Joe some time to grow to grow into a quarterback that can lead a team to a Super Bowl, which, which he did in 2012. So you're right; most teams are more than a quarterback away. But the guy Ben Roethlisberger went to a better organization, a, a self a, a ready-made team. He wins Super Bowl second year. So. Right. You're right. You, you played with Kijana Carter then too, right? Yep, played with KJ. KJ, yeah, he was a guy. Another guy I thought would go. Uh, he was came out the same year as I did. We thought that we'd go to Notre Dame together. He had a great career at Penn State, but he kept getting hurt with the the Bengals. Yeah, he hurt and it's just different, man. Like like you that- see guys, I see guys. Oh, do you tell you this? Yeah, you guys come to us, man. Like damn, this guy was a beast in college, monster. And he gets to the NFL. Like damn, what the fuck happened? Like. Like, what happened? Like, what? Like, you see some guys that play. I'm not gonna name the guys' names, but you would see that instincts. They didn't have pro guys' instincts, and then you see a guy that everybody thought was a head case out of college and dropped in the draft. Corey Dillon going to fucking have a Hall of Fame career because his instincts are like shit better than anybody you'll play with, and he was right. second round pick, and. They weren't going to play Corey over Kajana. Like they, Corey was like second, third team running back. It took Kajana getting hurt for Corey to come to the game. And I think three games to the rookie year, he rushed for the NFL rookie rushing, rookie rushing record. Yeah. Rookie Here's my Kajana story. So I get to the Bengals training camp, and, you know, I was on Pittsburgh, so I was familiar with him. Mm-hmm. But then, um, boom, I beat the beat the center and was was whatever. And Kajana cut, had the ball, was me one-on-one. It was training camp, so I wasn't really, really going to smack him, and he just dropped the ball and stopped. And I'm like, That's crazy, man. Really? Or, or is he get mad when y'all hit him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, God bless Kajana. He was a – Heck of a college football player and a legend, but sometimes it doesn't always translate, like you said. So one of the things, one of the reasons I always always gravitated toward Willie when I got to the Bengals organization is because it was always bigger than football. Now, me, I had my record label thing doing. I was trying to do other things. And so Willie would always get beyond football. I mean, all his stories. I mean, Willie spent a lot of time holding court, laughing, dropping his philosophies, dropping knowledge. But other than that. Willie would always talk about business. And one of the things I always admired about him was you knew this guy wouldn't have any problems transitioning out Mm -hmm. of football. And so from what I understand, how was your transition out of football? You already owned a fat burger. Um, So tell us about your experience with burger and how, what made you different as far as franchising? Because a lot of guys have money, but they don't have the knowledge. What made you different? Because you were successful for a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I I was trying stuff, and I, I always felt like, you know, my, my role model was, was Magic Johnson, man. So I actually got into Fat Burger because of Magic. Um, Magic, I read a story about Magic one time saying that while he was hot, while he was Magic Johnson, you know, in the 80s, he said on the road, the Lakers get all, the Lakers would get all these requests. You know, I'm a Donald Lakers fan. They would get all these requests for him to come in and meet these different guys. He said, well, he came to find out where all these guys were, the CEOs of companies, billionaires. They want to come in. T- they come in town. They want to meet, hang out with Magic. Magic said, "Okay, I'm gonna do this, but you guys gonna tell me what y'all do business wise." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Magic kind of put his hands in a couple different things, and um, that, that, that's kind of how I felt too while I was playing. You know, to, to be able to meet certain people. Because sometimes the football players, y'all know this, we don't meet the fucking Warren Buffett. Right. We, we, we meet the fucking con artists. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? Right. And for the guy who wants you to put some money into something, I said, no, I want to meet the guys who don't need me for shit. Like when I met um, Jeff Arnold, who started at WebMD, a good friend of Jeff Arnold. Jeff Arnold Jeff has uh, helped uh, share care now. You see him in the Falcons jersey. Jeff was a yeah. big man at 31 years old. Like a lot of times the athletes, man, we, we don't meet those guys. And so I always try to meet those kind of people and self-educate myself. Um, Fat Burger was good for a while. I told, you, I told you earlier, OG. I had three stores. I had one in Cincinnati, two in two in um, Atlanta. Oh, you had one in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Over in um, um, 
Why the fuck was that? I forget the name of the area. But had it for a while there. And I was, you know, when we came to the Ravens, the Ravens came to the Bengals. I uh-huh. fed the old Ravens football team. Um, so it was good for a while until the market crash. <laughs> you know what I mean? The market crash right. it became work. The shit was fun. Then it became work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, we stayed in there. We stayed for eight years, though. Um, my main store was open for eight years. Got out of that, man. And, um, you know, you said earlier with the music business, we all wasted money in music. I wasted money in music. Like all athletes. If I tell guys, beware of these athletes, beware of these entertainers and their fathers. I, I, I had a dude, my man, my, my man Sheepdog, rest in peace. He said, Look, boy, if you get a if you get an artist that comes with a manager already, run from him. Gotcha. Run. And I should have ran. Um, but had a chance, my artist um had songs on the radio. He was on major shows in Atlanta. My whole right. my only goal was to make him famous here in Atlanta. I said, No, right. you're from Alabama. I said, you get famous in Atlanta shit, we're we, we going to at least get the popping. Right. Had an issue with his family, his dad, man, you know, and all that shit was crazy. So, um, you remember my Kanye days, so. I'm, I remember that, man. And, um, and you know, always wanted to be ahead of the curve in, in business, man, and just didn't, didn't want to, you know, these guys now are doing it now, easily now, you know, because the, the internet is popping out. You know, right, we, we, we couldn't get we, distribution we, back in the day. That was a we, tough we part. A, just do, doing anything brand branding wise. You guys got a podcast now. If you guys did this back in the days, it would have been a little bit harder. I mean, right. but now you guys got avenues to to brand yourself. And I remember when Jerome Bettis was the first football player with a website. Right. She was like, it was wild. You know what I mean? Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, got it. I wish I'd been doing this business that I'm in right now 10, 15 years ago. Which is uh, the youth sports, um, you know, training, developing athletes. We, we have um, my Willie Anderson Lineman Academy. We have a recruiting service out of that. We do okay. camp, we train, we train pros, college, high school uh, offensive linemen. I wish I was doing this 10, 15 years ago um, yeah. because it's become a really, really big business. And people who started back then are now killing it right now. And right. I think a lot of times as football players, I told the key of this. We always run from football. When we get done, we run from it. Like, right. I didn't want to do with football. I didn't yep. want my son playing. I didn't want to hear that shit. Like, I was doing AAU basketball, bro. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right, right. I didn't want to you got away from football. I didn't want to do shit with football because it leaves a – we always leave the game with a bad taste in the mouth because I told Roger Goodell this at the draft last year. I said, man, we, we, we play football, but you never know how football is going to treat you until you start to be almost done. Right. And you look at basketball players and baseball players and you see you see their benefits and things they have after their sport is over. And football is like we we we, we in football you become an old rapper, you know, in hip hop, when you get older, like, get your ass out of here. Like we don't even want to hear you. No more. <laughs> right. Nobody wanna hear that. You know, Jay Jay Z said hip hop is the only genre of music who tells their old head to get to be gone. Right, exactly. I mean, rock and roll at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and oh, people man, are still standing in line for dead tickets. Yeah, yeah, man. So that, that's kind of how I see um, football doing. Um, so, you know, guys trying to be something other than football players, I think sometimes lead to the fact that we we don't want to get back into football. Even in trying to be a coach, you know, right. they they tell you because you played, they don't think you can do the grind work as a coach. And they'll take some 26 year old who was a GA in college. And, you know, I'm not going to profile, but let's face it, there's racial discrimination in this. Absolutely. This, guy, this guy never put his hand down in the turf. And that, that's something I want to ask you about, too, because I remember how I got released. Well, I got released. It was basically the offseason. I just come off of surgery and I was in Cincinnati. And Marvin calls me up and said, well, we're going to go another direction. He said, do you have anything to say? And I said, no, nah, we'll, we'll talk about it on the field. And then I went to Buffalo and then went to Tampa and that was it. And Describe to me how you, because you spent 13 years at the same franchise. Describe to me how you left the banks. <laughs> Yo, am, am, am I frozen right now? Uh, you're frozen to me, but I can still hear your audio. So I want you to okay. keep going. Um, what um, so, um, as you know, my, my, my feet were b- very bad feet in, in Cincinnati. You know, Big Sam Adam jacked my foot up in the game against the Raiders. Right. Um, we playing 2006. No, Sam played for the Raiders. He's in. He's in with, with, with the Bengals, and he's in pregame, all jacked up, jumped up, 
hyped up because we, we want to show the Raiders. So Sam tries to hip toss me in pregame. And <laughs> like, and I reversed that shit. When I reversed it, all his weight and my weight came down on my foot. And I, I felt something go pop. Wow. And I said, oh shit. This is, this is in the middle of a Pro Bowl season, my last Pro Bowl season. And Sam was easily about 340. What shit? 340. Shit. On a good day. On a good he day. He would be 340. <laughs> That's my man. What well, still to this day, the fastest D lineman for 10 yards I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at, at 350. I mean, yep. especially in days with the with the with the Ravens. But uh Hurt my foot really bad, man. Finished the season out. 07, I missed some time because of my knee and my foot. 2008, over the offseason, they franchised Big Stacy, my backup. Okay. I said, oh, shit, what that mean right there? Man? They gave Big Stacy $5 million. I had just resigned for my third contract with the Bengals. Yeah, third, yeah. So I'm like, uh, they franchised Big Stacy, man. What the fuck that mean? Mm-hmm. I go to a minute, I go to an OTA one day and, uh, I tell the story. Uh, Paul is down to my old line coach was in tears. He said, Man, I told Marvin to let me tell you. I said, Oh shit, what the fuck, Paul? He right. said, No, we don't, you're not gonna start this year. I'm like, what the fuck out of here? Like, not gonna start. He said, Yeah, we're gonna go with Stacy. I walk out and leave OTAs and go get on that plane and go back home. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck wrong with them? Like, get the fuck out of here. So I come down because Marvin tells my agent, um, hey, we're just gonna make his money this year. We're not gonna cut it. It's all right. Make like four million dollars a year. It's okay, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm okay. I'll go be a backup. But I'm knowing back in my mind, I'm gonna be a star. Like these states were still young. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna make my money you know, level. Going to training camp, you know, I play one or two games. The last preseason game. Now Bad feet. I'm arguing with the Bengals for years over therapy or all this shit. They had they had a fireman. They had a they had a retired fireman doing our orthotics. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Did you guys yeah, still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah we, we, can. Can, we got you. Can, can you going? guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and we can see Yo. you. Uh, Willie, hey, Willie, really quick, if you go at the bottom, there's a mute and a one, camera. Two, one, two. Hit stop. We lost you. I can't hear you guys. You can't. Damn. He can't lie. We can hear you. Don't say that too crazy. Yeah, we can. you hear us? Here, text him and tell him to turn his yo, uh, yo, yo, I can't hear you guys. camera off and back on. <clears throat> what? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm calling. Damn. Damn. Yeah, it's crazy. We can still hear him. That's just a shame. Oh, he's coming through crystal clear. And so, uh, we're yeah, technical difficulties. yeah, we can hear you put crystal clear. clear. And yeah. about the fact that he's got a forehead. Yeah, I, I, I see you guys now. I'm back now. You back? Are you? All right. Back. Well, you're still yeah, frozen in iron, but just keep talking because it's a good story. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, Try turning so your yeah, camera so, off and put it back on and see if it gives um, you back. Um, the, the last preseason game because the coach, I don't play in the game because, uh, like I said, the Bengals got the um, the damn um, um, off-duty fireman making orthotics, and my shit was terrible he made. And I'm like, yo, I can't play in the damn shoe. My foot is messed up and hurt. So I'm thinking I'm good because, no, this is the last preseason game. I'm thinking everything fine. So I didn't play in the game. I'm in the locker room after the game, preseason game. Marvin tell us, yo, we got two days off. We'll start back up this day right here. So with that, we said, um, we said, um, um, Marvin said, um, I said, Marvin, you, so I'm you to go Marvin, ahead. <laughs> you did. I said, Marvin, um, I need to go home, man, and, and get my orthotics made. So I can come back next week, ready to practice, and play. And I never forget. He said, "If you feel like that's what you need to do, go ahead and do it." I said, "What the fuck that mean?" Hmm. He said, "You gotta go do that. Go do it." I looked at him all crazy. I said, "All right." Got on the plane, went home. I was at Jay Christopher the next morning, eating breakfast. And Marvin called my phone. I said, it's "Cell phone." I said, "What's up, Marvin?" He said, "Did Terry talk to you?" Terry's my agent. 
I said, no, I said, no, Marvin. Why would Terry talk to me? No, another bullshit coming. Mm-hmm. He said, Well, you know, we want to do redo your contract. I said, redo my contract. I say, man, get the fuck out of here. Quit playing. No, nah, just going just gonna do it. I said, Marvin, are you serious? He said, uh, yes, but we serious. He said, um, but just, just go ahead and do it. I said, man, they, I said, man, y'all, y'all damn mind. I say, go ahead and cut me. I said, cut me. And um, he said, man, we he said, um, really, they know how important you are to me. And we're not gonna do that. Just go ahead and sign the country. I said, nope, I'm not doing it, Marvin. I said, because it's principles. I said, all this shit I've done for y'all. So um, Troy Blackburn calls me and he says, The uh, son of the of the Bills owner. The, 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 the son in law, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm real cool with Troy. Troy, my, my man. Troy said, Willie, um, man, he said, Paul Sparling said that our train. And he, okay, well, you still there? I said, What? Wait, 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 wait. Paul Sparling, the head trainer, said, What? Can you repeat that? That, that Troy Blackburn said that Paul Sparling, the head trainer, said that <laughs> Willie told me he don't have to play. I said, Troy, after all these fucking games, I'd have gave y'all hurt, bloody, playing bad knee, bad neck, all these meaningless games during the fucking season, during these two and 12 seasons, I still played. You're going you're gonna to believe that I said shit that I don't have to play? That I said that? He said, yeah, well, it, it did kind of sound kind of funny that that coming from you. I said, I can't believe I, I can't believe you even believe I said that shit. He said, hold on, man. Let me go back and make have, have a meeting with everybody and talk about this. That shit never happened. <laughs> I, I got released. I was like, okay. And uh, I was going to retire. I was like, man, fuck, I was going to retire. But um, uh, um, John Gruden called. No, Doug Williams called me from Tampa. The Ravens called me, and I and and, and uh, uh, North Turner, the San Diego called me, and I said, "Man, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go visit the Ravens first, just out of spite. I'm gonna go visit the Ravens." Mm-hmm. Went to the Ravens. Hugh Jackson, my boy, coach with, 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 with the Bengals, was coaching quarterbacks at, at the Ravens, and, and man, I was scared as hell because now I I've never been a free agent in my life. And now I'm going to the Ravens team that you know we we fucking have battles with these guys. You know what I mean? Right, so right. I go talk, talk to talk to talk to Ozzy. Ozzy gave me a great spiel. I said, Big Willie, I'm known for squeezing three, four more years out of guys' careers. I did it with Steve McNair. Did it with a couple other guys. I said, Hey, I said, I'm gonna give you a three year. I don't know, man. I don't know. I said, I'm gonna go visit Tampa because I'm still stuck on that damn Tampa shit back when I was a rookie. Mm-hmm. I said, right. I'm gonna go. And Hugh Jackson was like, I ain't gonna say what, ain't gonna say what Hugh said, but uh, <laughs> about Tampa. But uh, Cass was like, man, you don't want to go to Tampa and, and you know, go in that John Gruden offense and all that shit. So Hugh Jackson takes me down to the, no, I meet Rex Ryan first. Rex Ryan was like, yo, that's how fucking NFL tackle look like, like, like right? This guy has an NFL fucking, this is how NFL tackle should look right here. Mm-hmm. Talk to the O line coach, John Masco, talk to Rex. I still went inside because I'm upstairs. I said, yo, how them dudes down in that fucking locker room will feel about me? That's all I care about because OG know this. Like we have some fucking. It's like going to me going to Pittsburgh. It's like OG came from Pittsburgh to the Natty. We looking at him sideways a little bit. Like yo, we have some battle with this motherfucker. Now he gonna be in that locker room. You just mm-hmm. didn't really know. So right. You know, me being with the Bengals for twelve years. So I mean, I faced Ray Lewis and all these guys for twelve years, twice a year. Came in the locker room, man. I'm nervous. Hugh said, "Man, bring your big ass down to the locker room." The, the Ravens locker room is like no other locker room in the history of sports. Players run that. It's a players-driven locker room. Coaches don't come in it. The players run it. Okay. And Hugh in the locker room, and he said, he said, yo, y'all motherfucking boy here. And everybody said at one time, like the whole defense said, Big Willie! <laughs> and I was like, the whole weight of the world off my shoulder dropped down. I said, fuck it. I'm signing here. You know yeah. what I mean? Just because them guys in the locker room all screamed my name out, came over, dapped me up. Right. You know, from Trevor Price to Ray Lewis to Haloti, Suggs, Bart Scott, all them guys, man. And it was like, I said, yo, this shit feel like home. You're home, so, right. So, right. You know what I mean? It, it felt like home. So right. when uh, the Bengals found out, TJ and Carson, 
They all called me and said, what the fuck is wrong with you? You going to the Ravens? The motherfucker won five games last year. They new quarterback. Carson said, man, I can't believe you ain't going to San Diego. Because Carson wanted me to go to San Diego because because he was there. He from he from, he lived in San Diego. Him and North Turner was neck with neighbors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. He said, man, you can go to San Diego, man. Just back, back in California, you're gonna love that shit. Well, I'm like, hell no, nah, I'm not gonna go to damn San Diego. That's too damn far. I'm going, I'm going to cold ass, gray, gloomy Baltimore. That shit remind me of Cincinnati. Right. You know what right. I mean? We he, felt it home. Cold, you know, I'm, I'm in the same division. <clears throat> and yes, I want to see the Bengals twice a year. Yes, I do. Right. And that shit was home, man. And I ain't gonna lie, like it was it was the best. I had some great times with the Bengals, but it was the best football year of my entire life. Wow. And now were you a starter or a backup? Oh, starter. I, I oh. can't. So so they, they signed me, right? So I came in, I told the old line coach, I said, yo, I was gonna give me a three-year deal. I'm, I'm not, that's like my fourth or fifth contract. I'm like, oh shit. I'm gonna come in, come in and make it three million dollars a year. I'm gonna be a backup, be cool. So right. My whole my whole communication with the Ravens like yeah you know I'm gonna come in and be a good backup right. guard. Right. Right. <laughs> I come in right. backup. O line coach Masco says why did you say that shit for? Because you got a guy already. He's oh hell no you ass come here to play. So now I'm just be the backup. So I got there and um you were trying to chill hotel. for a couple years huh? <laughs> what? I'm trying to steal for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, so you got that bro and uh my man. Um, um, shit, Adam, fuck Adam, Adam follows me. That's Adam last name. Syracuse, good young tackle man. I'm really cheering for him to make it. You know what I mean? <laughs> for the first couple games, I'm backing up. We playing Pittsburgh on Thursday night. I on the sideline, cold and old as a motherfucker on the sideline. <laughs> I ain't got no therapy, no OG. No, 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 before I'll, I'll bring my therapist in town. Remember that? I'll bring my therapist. Yeah, in yeah, time. yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna back up. I ain't bringing no therapy. I ain't getting no massage. No, no chiropractor. No nothing. Like, I'm not playing. Yeah. Like, y'all got to deal with James Harrison. I want to try to feel on the sideline and be cheering and saying "Good job, guys," and give motherfucker water and come to the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try that shit feel for you, right? <laughs> motherfucker, Adam gets hurt, and yeah, that yeah, that they're in a mid battle with Pittsburgh too. I said, oh shit, this motherfucker. I said, Adam, get your ass up. Get up. Get up. Meanwhile, I got my therapist in town working on him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trying to get him back out there. Trying to get him oh, back. That's an awesome story. Listen, Adam gets up. I go, I go on the, I'm on the sideline doing old man stretches. I'm tight as shit. Old man to the left, old man to the right stretch. Right. <laughs> I said, oh shit. I gotta play with these motherfuckers again. My mind wasn't even right. <laughs> Adam come again, touch me on the shoulder. Big Will, I'm good. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And I got that game. We playing Tennessee next week. Tennessee won the division, won the AFC championship that year. Uh-huh. We won the AFC division that year. Uh number one seed. We playing them. Playing Javon Curse again. I'm not playing again. Adam get hurts again. I'm on the sideline again doing old man stretches. <laughs> I came in the game and balled the fuck out. Now, meanwhile, Marvin had told the, the Ravens that I became a locker room lawyer guy. Right. That I didn't want to practice anymore. So right Harbaugh here. felt his mission. It was Harbaugh's first year. He felt his mission to be a hardcore coach of me. I'm I'm, I'm on scout team, bro. Like, what? you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm about 15 pounds head because I've been living in the hotel. You know what I mean? He on my ass hard until one day Bart Scott said, now at the Ravens, Ray Lewis got treated like a quarterback. You know, mm-hmm. if you if you was a backup line on the scout team, you ain't fucking hit Ray. You pull up, <laughs> right? Like, everybody going full speed. So when Marvin telling us, yeah, Ray Lewis practice every day. I, said, I can practice every day too. When I ain't, if I ain't getting hit, right? I'm running at full speed and playing touch football. I do that shit every day, right? Right. Um. Uh, so one day, uh, Bart Scott said, "Yo, if any of y'all motherfuckers hit Big Willie." It's gonna be a motherfucking problem out here. I said, oh shit. And then Bart started yelling. What the fuck Big Willie on fucking scout team for? No, Bart, no. For 12 years, we had motherfucking battles with them dudes. Yeah. And but I'm still in the mode like, yeah, I'm gonna go through this shit, man. I hate practice every day. I wasn't playing. And my competitors were telling me, just go tell them you ready to play. Because Hugh Jackson kept saying, Big Willie, nigga, as soon as you ready to play, it's, it's go time. So, nah, Hugh, I ain't ready yet. <laughs> so 
I played in uh I played in uh this Cleveland. They call it uh you know long ass stories. Uh, played against Cleveland. They, they said, man, we're gonna call all the Pro Bowlers out from last year. Out. Uh, any Pro Bowl we got, we're, we're gonna call them out against Cleveland. I'm the backup tight end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the heavy. I'm the heavy package tight end at, at, at this point. All right. Hey, Willie, you're a Pro Bowler too. I said, man, cut that shit out. I'm, I'm the heavy tight end. They called me out, so they introduced all Pro Bowlers. <laughs> so they called me out at at tight end. Willie, that shit was crazy as hell, but wow. the Titan game, bro, I ended up playing and played really fucking good. I played a dominant I, I, I got the game ball that game. Shit, mm. that was like week four or five. I started the next 12 games. I missed one game, missed the Giants game, got hurt. Um, and played the 12 game, man. Played all the way into the championship game. We had no bye week that week because the hurricane hit hit Houston mm-hmm. that year and took our bye week. We played all the way through. We were fucking by the time we played the Pittsburgh in the championship game, it was the most physical. I don't know if you guys remember that game where uh Ryan Clark almost killed Willis McGay. Yeah, I do remember that. Yep. Man, it was the most violent game I've ever been in. And I retired on the bus, dog. My knee was my swole like a balloon. <laughs> it was purple. And it, I said, yo, if I keep playing, I'm gonna die on the football field. I told Isaac Newton that. I said, Isaac, I have nothing in my tank. I'm taking pain pills, green pain pills for practice and tore it off for practice that. I'm wow. paying for now because my kidneys fuck right now. Yeah. yeah, I said, man, I'm taking pills. Eyes, I don't know what I'm taking. Just to practice. That's how bad I was hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, OG, when I found out all these guys was on HGH and testosterone, I was mad as hell. Right. Because I said, how these guys in their thirties still playing? Killing. Yeah. This shit yeah. don't hurt. That shit. That shit was. That shit hurt my skeleton to practice, bro. That year. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, so, man. getting out of football, you had the transition. What made you go into starting an offensive line academy? And, and tell us more about it. And tell us how we can find out where uh, where parents can sign up their kids if they're serious about football. Yo, man, my screen being froze really irritate me. Hey, yeah. so on the bottom left, on the bottom of the screen, it should say mute, stop cam, cam mic. Go okay. to stop cam, hit that, and hit it back again. Hit it. Come back. Hit it again. There. Oh Jesus! Same frozen. You? At least you got a nice look on your face, though. What the I fuck? know. <laughs> but, but but anyway, man. Um, um, got out of football. You know, what I mean, realized that I had never spent any time with my son. Um, and, and your son is game. where? Your son is playing at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech now, but but when I got when I got a football, he was like in the sixth, sixth, seventh grade. You know what I mean? Uh huh. And I just realized that I had spent that much time with him doing anything. The, and I, I was a fun dad. You know, I come home and we just a Disneyland movie, dad. I was, I was a fun. There was nothing, anything serious, nothing of substance. So, so he tells me want to play football. I'm like, yeah, right. Boy, you, you a suburban kid, bro. You don't play no damn football. Like, let's, let's do everything himself football. And to you know, his friends tell me, yo, he, he the fastest kid at school. I said, yo, this got to be the worst school ever. I said, my my son is clumsy as hell. He the fastest kid at the school. I said, this is just sorry as hell. So. <laughs> We go to the park one day, me, a couple of my boys that, 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 that run my company for me. And I realized my son didn't know anything about football. He didn't know how to do a stance. He Because I, I never did any of that stuff with him. I, I was like, man, fuck football. I'm like, let's play basketball. Do something else. Go be. My son was really good at with animals. And I said, yo, I said, yo, if you get stuck in, we get stuck in the jungle, you're going to be the guy that leads us out of this motherfucker. <laughs> because he loves animals. I got my love of animals from my son. I grew up like, you know, I wasn't a pet guy like that. You know what I mean? But. My son loved animals. I, I, I started to love animals. You know what I mean? So football and being around these hard-nosed-ass coaches who's going to only compare him to me, I didn't want that for him. You know what I mean? So I didn't want him playing football, man. And um, we started playing. I realized how far he was behind. I spent from his eighth-grade year to his junior high school trying to make him a basketball player. Realized that wasn't his passion. <laughs> that was my passion. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And all that training we did, this dude would never go play basketball. I said, then you got all this fucking training. You got this, all this high-level ass training. He didn't love basketball. He loved putting that football in his hand and, and playing, man. So with the with the Lion Academy, people would ask me to, to train their son. I said, man, I can't because my son is so far behind. Mm-hmm. And he said he wants to go to play college. He, he wants to go to college. And I told him I paid for my baby sister. She dropped out. I paid for my nephew. He dropped out. Told my son. 
I'm not paying for you, but I pay for everything up to to help get you to college. Tutoring, training, traveling across the country to camps, whatever it takes to get you there, I pay for that. But this scholarship is gonna be this, this gonna be yours. Right. Not gonna be daddy's scholarship. You know what I mean? Because enough people are gonna think it's me anyway. Because you know, you're in the NFL, and it's, it's hard, man. You know, it was hard for him because everybody questioned everything. Do, do you is your dad want this or do you want it? You know what I mean? So I couldn't push my son because if I push my son, I'm the overbearing NFL dad right. who think it's too much. Better. No, bro, I'm, I'm pushing my son to be a man. Because I told myself, I, I don't care about any performance. Just don't get your ass pumped. <laughs> That's all I care about. I don't want to be in the stands with these little ass dads and hear, yeah, man, if only Jared got you know, a little bit stronger. I don't want that shit. Like, I don't, don't get pumped. I don't care if you miss a pass, drop. I don't care. Just don't be a damn punk. Like, be tough, be a man, have your responsibility, and, and be 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 that guy like that. So, but through training, he got really good, man. And uh, Flo was talking about his son. Flo, you said earlier about your son uh, not having passes, enough passes. My son, junior year, the quarterback told my son, not throwing you the ball. You know, just out of pure, some, some hatred shit. Not throwing you the ball. But he threw. He had, he started for a whole year and had twelve catches. He had two minutes and one minute, two minutes and one second of film. But luckily, grace of God, he scored seven touchdowns out twelve out twelve catches. Wow. Where did he start out in school? Huh? Where did he start out going to school? He transferred to Georgia Tech, in my understanding. No, no, he he's, a, he's no he, he's at Georgia Tech. He's going to transfer from Georgia Tech. Oh, okay. So okay. He's going he's going he's going to graduate here in December. Um, and yeah, one year of eligibility left. Huh? He'll have one one more year of eligibility. Yeah, one more year left. And with this yeah, whole being a wide receiver at Georgia Tech can't be a good look. Mm-mm. Say again. Being a wide receiver at Georgia Tech can't be a good look. Yeah, we all got fooled by the whole the old staff, Paul Johnson, who's a really good coach, but he didn't believe in throwing the football. Right. The new staff, you know, great coach, Coach Collins, really good coach, really good dude, good staff. They changed the whole offense. They're recruiting. You know, I don't know right now if my son. Would have would have got recruited at Georgia Tech right now because they're getting all four they getting four they getting four star receivers coming to Georgia Tech right now. now. My son he showed out his senior year he showed out. Now he, he was the man of the team he showed out, but uh he played like he was totally he was an athlete, played receiver, played quarterback, DB, all that kind of stuff. So his film was kind of all over the place. Okay, but Georgia Tech right now under Coach Collins right now he's recruiting guys who want to go who he feel like you know the old the old recruiting pitch at Georgia Tech was hey come to Georgia Tech. We got a thirty-year, thirty-year plan. You know what I mean? Right. You know, uh, one in six. No, they be ten more years. There. It was nothing about football. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, they were trying to use Calvin Johnson a little bit. They would use a little bit Demarius Thomas a little bit. But now, Coach Collins and the staff right now, they, they, they say, "Hey, man, we're recruiting guys now out of Atlanta that across the country are trying to go to the NFL." So that new staff is a different staff. You know what I mean? Different, different staff that we came upon. So again, back to the Lyman Academy. Yes. You 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 got into this because of how you started in football. You didn't really know anything, but once you mm-hmm. discovered technique, tell us about that. And how how many guys did you put in Division One schools? So, like I said, I started this man in 2016. Parents have been asking me to start with Lyman. I couldn't because my son needed help. So as soon as my son got his scholarship, I started doing this. Um, at the high school level, guys were asking me to do the pro stuff. I really didn't know how to train. I said, how do you train? Lineman, like, what do you do? You go with stands. Like, I asked a thousand coaches, asked people. So, what I did was, I ended up creating my own system over time. Like I said, I told you earlier, OG Chuck Smith, who was one of the best D line trainers in the country, Chuck showed me how to set my system up. So, okay. I, I set a system of training up how I train guys, what I believe guys should know. Um, I started doing that, man, in um, 2016. Last okay. year, the guys I started with. Uh, in 16, uh, they were freshmen. I had four, three All-Americans last year. Paris Johnson out of Cincinnati, Ohio, out of Princeton. Paris, number one lineman in the country. He's competing at uh, Ohio State right now as a um, starting right tackle. He, he, he would be if you, if you if you go on overtime, I see some videos. Paris had one of the top viewing overtime huddle videos like ever. Like he was just destroying kids and just bullying kids in high school, man. Really good kid though. 4.0 student. Um, Paul Chio, 
is at um at, at Clemson right now, the freshman at Clemson, um, competing for a job. And um, my man Chris Morris out of Memphis, uh, Tennessee, Chris is at Texas A and M. So I had some right. guys, man, since they were freshmen, started developing them, teaching these guys, man. I tell people about Paris. Paris became so obsessed with being a great offensive lineman that it was easy training, you know. So training these kids, man, you, you see a lot of times these kids only play one sport. Linemen today play one sport. Back when we came up, we played basketball, we wrestled, baseball. It's easier for me to train and develop a kid who plays multiple sports because it's easier to train their bodies. You know what I mean? Right. They're, they're better athletes. So um, I just think linemen, I always thought linemen was the most under – coached position in all of football. You take seven, eight grade football, they usually give the worst, the worst dad gets the offensive line position. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. And usually those eight, seven or eight grade coaches, they run so many big ass kids out of football. By the time he get to ninth, 10th grade, he hates football because my story earlier to you guys, I wanted to be a D lineman because our name got called out. Right. You know what I mean? So now in this quarterback driven world now, some of these youth coaches at the younger level, they they destroy kids, they destroy big kids' confidence. You know what I mean? So right. I started the Williams Alignment Academy, you know, basically off because I've seen that one of the most important positions on the team is under coach. It was underappreciated. And so, you know, we train these kids, man. We train pros, train guys, like I said, I train guys from Dallas Cowboys to the Eagles, uh, Lane Johnson from the Eagles, um, you know, a bunch of pro guys, but I'm more proud of the high school kids that we're developing. Um, like I said, we, we, we put so many kids in college the last couple of years. Everybody's not a Division One athlete. Got kids going to Division II. Um, My goal is to help kids, and my coaches and I, I have three other coaches. Um, our goal is to help kids just be better linemen. And if, you, and if God and your mom and dad gave you the genes to be a college lineman, well, I think coming to us, you know, we 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 got a, got a proven – you got a proven formula that that get kids in college, man. So. Now you said you, we talked before the show that you said you got guys coming from all over the place. You know, some people you know stay with you, whatever. How does somebody engage with you? Somebody listening to the show right now has a lineman out there that they need some training because I agree with you. There's horrible lineman training out there. There's very very little uh, access to somebody who knowledgeable who knows what they're doing. How would they get a hold of you? How would they do business with you? So my website is uh, Willie Anderson Lineman Academy dot net. Okay. I also have my, my training videos um, at training.olineblock.com. But the easiest way, man, the most way, I'm very active on Twitter and, and Instagram. I put up a ton of videos of, of me training guys. I put up a ton of videos of me playing, you know, going against the Reggie Whites and Bruce Smiths. And um, so on Twitter and Instagram, my name is Big Willie 7179. And it's probably. All right, we'll say that again. Big Willie, Big Willie, seven one seven nine, is my Twitter and Instagram. Okay, All you right. know, and and videos, content. You know, what I mean, I break down the videos. I break. I, I I try to put a lot in the descriptions of the videos to teach. I, mean, I have guys call me from Brazil, Germany, uh, Australia, telling me that they use my videos to train. I'm like, yo, fuck that. Buy my videos. <laughs> like, so. <laughs> So, All right. Hey, well, we're, we're, definitely we're definitely gonna put that on our in our comment section, man. Hey, it was great having you, bro. And uh, you based out of Atlanta. When I get down to Atlanta, man, we gonna sit and chop it up, man, because I think we can do some things. Definitely. Man, appreciate it, dog. Hey, I love being this, man. You guys are doing a good job. I hate the damn camera froze up, man, but but thank you, thank you guys, bro. We That's appreciate right, it, bro. Man. Will, great, Will, man. I talk. Appreciate you. All right, all right, dog. Will, stay we up, out. bro. All right, bro. For sure.